the book of Deuteronomy, Moses is speaking to all of Israel. The name Deuteronomy comes from the Septuagint title Deuteronomy, which means second law. This title is apt since Deuteronomy is a second telling of the law. It reiterates much of what is said in the previous four books. Deuteronomy picks up where the book of Numbers left off with the Israelites. The book contains three speeches by Moses. The first speech is in Deuteronomy 1 through 4, 43. In Deuteronomy 1, 1 through 4, 43, is Moses addressing God's mighty act on Israel's behalf from the time of the covenant at Sinai to this renewal ceremony in Moab. Moses wanted to teach about God's nature as Savior and Protector in order to motivate the Israelites to keep the covenant. Normally, it takes only 11 days to travel from Mount Sinai to Kadesh Barnea. Going by the way of Mount Seir, the Israel had continually rebelled against God's leadership and refused to go into the Promised Land. Moses explains the Lord's instructions while in the land of Moab, which is east of the Jordan River. It was now time to leave the mountain and go occupy the land God had given them which is from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The load of the amount of people were too much for Moses to handle himself. So he tells the people to appoint a good leader who have good qualities of wisdom, understanding, a good reputation, and fairness. These would be the judges and the officials. The people were given instructions about everything there was to do. They left Mount Sinai and traveled to the wilderness towards the hill country of the Amorites. God gives them the land and Moses commands them to occupy the land because the Lord has given it to them. This was good land according to the scouts of the land. They rebelled against God and refused to go in the promised land and they complained against God's deliverance, even after Moses reminded them of God's security. The Lord became angry at their complaining and promised that none of them would enter into the promised land except Caleb, son of Jephunneh. This was because he followed the Lord completely. The Lord was so angry, he even told Moses that he couldn't enter the promised land. Now Joshua, son of Nun, will lead the people into the land, and God will give the land to the children who are innocent. God tells Moses to turn around and go back through the wilderness and cross the Red Sea. The Israelites decided to go and fight for the land. They thought it would be easy, but without Moses, they would be crushed by their enemies. rebelled against the Lord's command and went into the hill country to fight. The Amorites came like a swarm of bees and chased them all away from Seir to Ormah. This made them come back and weep before the Lord, but he refused to listen. This made them stay in Kadesh for a long time. Moses obeys God's instructions to turn around and head back across the Red Sea. They wandered through the region of Mount Seir for a long time. God then instructs Moses to tell the people that they are to pass through the country belonging to their relatives, the Edomites. As they traveled, Moses warns the people that the Lord has said not to mess with the Moabites, and they will not get any of their land. God was with his people through the wilderness and has blessed them and they have lacked nothing. As they traveled, Moses warns the people that the Lord has said not to mess with the Moabites, and they will not get any of their land. After 38 years, the Israelites went through Kadesh, Bernia, and ended up in Zered Brook. By this time, all the people that were old enough to fight in battle were dead, 
just as God has said would happen. The Lord struck them down until they had all been eliminated from the community. When all the men that were able to fight were dead, the Lord told Moses that they were to cross the border of Moab and Ar and enter into the land of Ammonites, which are the descendants of Lot. The Israelites were not to take any of their land because God has given it to the Ammonites. As Moses continued, the Lord commanded them to keep going and cross the Arnon Jordan. The Lord gave them Sion the Amorite, king of Heshbon, and their land. They were commanded to go and in an attack to occupy their land. The Lord told them, the people will be terrified of their name and they will tremble with dread and fear. Continuing, Moses comes to the land of Heshbon and he asks, Hey, uh, King Heshbon, can we come to your town? We promise to buy any food or drink we need. All we need to do is to get through. No. But King Sion of Heshbon refuses to let them pass through because the Lord made King Sion's heart stubborn and defiant so that the Lord could help them defeat him. As the Lord handed over King Sion and his land over to the Israelites, they conquered the land. The Israelites crushed him. His sons and all his people conquered all of his towns and completely destroyed all the people, even all the women and children. No city walls were too strong for them. The Lord helped them conquer this land as well as the land of Ar and of Arnon, George, the town of George, and the whole area as far as Gilead, except the lands of the Ammonites, because the Lord had commanded them to leave them alone. After surveying such great successes, Moses reminded Israel that God's blessings are often directly related to submission to his will. After this battle, the Israelites headed to the land of Bashan, where King Og and his entire army attacked them at Edrith. But the Lord told them not to be afraid, because he has given them victory over Og and his entire army and he will give them their land. They were to treat King Og and his army just as they treated King Sion of Heshbon. Then the Lord handed over King Og and all his people to the Israelites, and not a single person survived. Again, they conquered everything, and even the women and children were killed, but they did keep all of the livestock and their own needs. No city's walls were too strong for them. They now have conquered all the cities on the plateau and all Gilead, and Bashan, as far as the towns of Selech and Edre, which were part of Og's kingdom in Bashan. Moses reminds Joshua what God has done and gives him a command from God not to be afraid of the nations because God will fight for them. Moses then begins to praise God and prays to him, asking to be able to cross the Jordan and see the land on the other side. But the Lord was angry and declared that he speak no more of it. He told Moses to go up to the Sag Peak instead and look over the land in every direction, but he may not cross the Jordan. After taking over the land, Moses gave the tribes of Reuben and Gad the territory beyond Arar along Arnon George, plus half of the hill country of Gilead with its towns. He also gave the tribe of Manasseh the rest of Gilead and all of Bashan, Mekirga Gilead. Reuben and Gad also got part of Gilead and the Jordan Valley. Moses then commanded to the tribe that the fighting men must cross the Jordan ahead of the, their Israelite relatives, armed and ready to assist them. They could then return back to the land that the Lord had given them after securing the rest of the Israelites. The Lord told Moses to encourage and strengthen Joshua because he will lead the people across the Jordan and he will give them all the land that he was told to look at. Moses talks to the Israelites about obeying God. He tells them to do so, so that they will be able to live, and that they will be able to enter and occupy the land. Moses is not to add or subtract from the commands he has given, just to obey what the Lord has said. Moses reminds the Israelites that the Lord has done for them at Balpor. Everyone that was there and worshipped Baal was killed. But those who were faithful, faithful 
were not killed. The significance of this event was that Israel was taught that the only way to survive in the new land was by being faithful to Yahweh's covenant and obeying the statutes and ordinances of Yahweh which Moses had given them. The way of wisdom was the way of the covenant. The Israelites are to pass on what they have learned to their children, their grandchildren, and so on and so on, never forgetting the day when they stood before the Lord at Mount Sinai. Moses instructed the Israelites to have no idols of any shape or form. Some might include man, women, animals, any stars or planets, God has forbidden this. This is emphasized many times by Moses because it is very important to only worship God and not make idols to put before God. This would be evil in the sight. This is emphasized many times by Moses because it is very important to only worship God and not make idols to put before God. This would be evil in the sight of God. If the Israelites are to break the covenant, they will disappear from the land and be destroyed. After some time, and the Lord will scatter them among the nations, and only a few will survive. The Israelites are told that if they were to be spread among nations, then they would worship idols and other gods, substituting the real God. But if this does happen, and the Israelites call on the name of the Lord, and search sincerely, they will find him. Moses reminds the Israelites that God is the only God of heaven and earth. There is no one like him. If they are to obey his commands and decrees, all will be well with them and their children. These instructions were so that Israelites could have a long life in the land that God had given them for all of time. Moses reminds the Israelites that God is the only God of heaven and earth. There is no one like him. If they are to obey his commands and decrees, all will be well with them and their children. These instructions were so that Israelites could have a long life in the land that God had given them for all of time. We are also reminded in Deuteronomy of the cities of refuge that Moses set apart east of the Jordan River for anyone who could flee to them that had unintentionally killed someone. The ending of chapter 4 begins with the introduction of Moses' second speech. It contains the laws, decrees, and regulations that the Israelites are to follow. This introduction is very similar to Deuteronomy 1, 1 1-4, with the accounts of Moses' preaching be on the Jordan. Now clap it up, clap it up, clap it up now. Now clap it up, clap it up, clap it up now. Now clap it up, clap it up, clap it up now. Clap it up, clap it up, clap it up now. Now breathe in.